Hi everybody, welcome back to the Ultimate Tech Hub. Today, we're gonna unbox, assemble, test and review this outdoor commercial heater from FireSense. This patio heater puts out 46,000 BTUs. This patio heater operates on a standard 20 pound propane tank, which is not included. And you'll get about 10 hours of heat from each propane tank. This also comes with a reliable piezo ignition system and durable wheels for easy mobility. So let's open the box and see what's inside. The assembly instructions. The lower post. This box contains three support posts. These are the reflector panels and the reflector center cap. This is the upper post. And this is the tank housing. This box contains the head assembly. And this is the base of the heat lamp. And there's a convenient hole to add sand or water to weight it down. This is the chain to secure the propane tank. And like I said before, these are the three support posts. the reflector center cap, and the three reflector panels. And this is the head assembly, and this is the regulator. And this is all the hardware for the assembly. And this is the wheel assembly for the base. Okay, so you can see these are all the parts laid out. And now it's time to assemble the heater. So step one is the base. Here's where you add the sand or the water. So first thing we do is add the wheel assembly to the base. This package of hardware includes a wrench. Okay, now you can fill it up with sand or water. And you can see we're gonna use water. Simply fill it to the top and put the cap back on. Done. Now it's time to add the three support posts. And now we'll attach the lower post to the three support posts. Thank you. 
And now we'll screw on the upper post to the lower post. And now we'll add the tank housing. Now we'll add the three reflector studs to the top of the head assembly. And to be honest, this part of the assembly was backbreaking. Oh. Only one of the three reflector studs went in easily. The other two would only screw in about halfway and then would go no further. So I added WD-40 and that didn't work. So I used regular pliers and was able to get the second reflector stud in. However, the third one would not budge. So I broke out the vice grips and after about 20 minutes of going back and forth, I was finally able to get it screwed all the way in. There was obviously a flaw in the screw holes on the head assembly. So I'm not sure if you'll encounter the same problem, but if you do, use pliers or vice grips. Next, attach the head assembly to the upper post with four screws and four washers. Another issue I had was getting this hose to go all the way through. For some reason, it got caught on that middle part where the upper post and lower post connect. But finally, it went through. It was also a bit difficult to line up the screws from the head assembly to the upper post. This took a bit of time and patience. And now it's time to connect all four reflectors. And we'll connect them with nine screws and nine nuts. And just a heads up, removing all this plastic from these panels was arduous. The plastic film didn't come off easily and left small bits here and there. So be patient when removing this plastic. And guys, remember, hit subscribe to keep this channel alive. So now attach the panels with the provided screws and nuts. Do not over tighten the nine screws and nuts. After you get them all attached, then you can go back and tighten them. All right, we're all done. These are the wing nuts and washers that will be used to attach the reflector to the head assembly. First, attach three washers to the top of the three reflector studs. Next, place the reflector on top. The reflector studs should go through the holes. Next, add the washers again, and then use the wing nuts to finish the job. Make sure it's good and tight. Next, go ahead and attach the regulator to the hose. Use a wrench, and this should be very tight. And the final step is to attach the propane tank. So this is the on and off in the high and low adjustment. And the red button is the ignition button. Before you turn on the heater for the first time, you need to clear the air out of the hose. So simply push down on this button for two minutes. And this clears all the air out of the hose. So simply turn the off button to the left and push in. You'll hear gas coming out. Then punch the igniter button, the red button. And you should hear the flame start. You can't really see it during the day, 
but at night you can see the flame very well. So guys, as far as our review goes, we've used this heater in the backyard for about a month now, and it works well, and it does keep us warm on our patio. It also looks nice, and it's not difficult to use. However, the only downside to this patio heater was the difficult assembly. It just wasn't easy. So if you can get past the assembly issues, then this heater should be a good choice for you. We bought this heater at Sam's Club and paid around $120. And of course, there'll be a link in the description below to where you can buy this heater. Well guys, we're all done here. And as usual, I wanna thank you guys for watching. And remember, if you like these videos, give a thumbs up and share it. If you love them, hit subscribe to keep this channel alive. Thanks again for watching.